Well, hello and welcome to another episode of Confidence on Chain podcast. I'm excited to see you again because we have an amazing guest today who also happens to be a curly head. So you know she's amazing. You know she's Woo-hoo! awesome. And she's got an amazing message. And the name of her company could not be better. I'll try, but it's not possible. So she is the principal, the owner, the CEO, the creator, the lady in residence of Brave Communication, which is so in line what we want to talk about today. So Julia, welcome to the show. Please introduce yourself. Thank you, Catherine. I'm so excited to be here. And thank you for inviting me to be a part of a podcast. Um, I love the name and, you know, just about being unchained. But um, just a little bit about me. Um, As you said, I am the CEO of Brave Communication, which is a a leadership development and coaching firm. And uh, my passion is helping people unleash their leadership potential and then being brave enough to lead the way God intended them to. So, uh, yeah, I'm excited to talk with you today. Yes, that is so in alignment with everything that God is doing in my own life. So I just love everything about you. Love what you're doing. And I love the fact that you are unapologetically about mixing and commingling and marrying and dating your calling with your uh, vocation, which is so awesome. Yes. And it didn't, I I didn't, I wasn't always. So I, this, to say that. Now there's a journey and a story behind all of that. So um, I'm I'm very um, happy that I can now own it and claim it because it's part of who I am and who I'm called to serve. I love that, and that that just that's an amazing segue into what the first question. So, what did you struggle with when you first started? Like, how were you able to successfully uh, commingle the two, or did you have to struggle at first? Yeah. So, um, you know, it's, it's interesting when you start talking about the origin story, I look back like now, um, in addition to being CEO of my own company, um, I'm a Forbes, uh, coaches council member. I've done leadership development work for Chick-fil-A, um, the USDA, um, hospital systems. I've worked with, I mean, keynote speaker nationally. I've worked with hundreds of clients all over the U S right. But that's not where I started. <laughs> that's not where, um, when I started, ironically, um, yesterday, as of this taping, yesterday was the five-year anniversary of Brave. I started Woo-hoo! Brave five years ago. Yes. Thank you. And, uh, and I was so excited that I froze. Mm-hmm. After I filed my paperwork with the state, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm open for business. I didn't tell a soul for three to six months. Like five people knew. My mom, my husband, <laughs> my two good friends, and the, the lawyer, you know, the lawyer who helped me with the paperwork, right? They right. were the only people who knew I was open for business. Wow. And um, so what happened was it, it happens to a lot of us. You know, we feel God calls us to do something and then we step out and do it. And we're like, yeah, I'm just going to have this crazy faith. And then we stop and go, Oh crap, what did I just do? And for me, it took me about three to six months um, before I was to get out of fear. So I struggled with, um, and I still do, I'm not, I'm not going to lie about it. I struggled with um, inferiority. Like, who am I to step out on my own? I was working for a consulting company and um, I was um, the principal trainer for this particular consulting company. Life happened. I was married. We decided to have a baby. I was like, oh, great. You know, millions of women around the world do it. They have a baby, then go back to work. Well, I did not know that, you know, good daycare was like mortgage payment. And I was mm-hmm. like, I had to make some shifts. And then my husband's job started moving us. So it was like, well, who am I to step out on my own? Um, do I have the skills? I, do I, can I do this? You know, I knew I was good at training. I knew I was good at coaching, you know, but running a business is something completely different. So I struggled with inferiority. I struggled with imposter syndrome, right? Um, this idea of if people really if they really knew, they would not want to engage with me, right? Mm -hmm. Um, And what I didn't realize was that all of that, even in the midst of the struggle, all of it was a part of my journey because Mm -hmm. I can speak to people now in their space about, I don't feel good enough. I can't tell you how many times I hear my clients say that. Um, I can't go for that leadership position because I don't have fill in the blank. Um, And yet... God has called us to do some great and amazing things if 
were just brave enough to say yes and keep going. Oh my God. I was like, woo, everything is popping. I saw your snaps, like we're at the, you know, spoken word concert. Snap, snap, snap. snap. Oh my God. That was so good because (laughs) listen, for the longest time, I thought I was the only one for the longest time, because when we um, self-isolate and we're going Mm -hmm. through what we're going through, we cannot hear this conversation, we cannot hear somebody else say, listen, me too. I went through that too. And there's this kind of shame in like, you need to be an expert right away or nobody else is going through that. So thank you so much for your honesty. And thank you for the fact that you're still owning with it because you know what they say, new level, new devil. As you move up, then you have to deal with new stuff. So it's, it's, it's always a process of growing and evolving. Yeah. And here's what I found. Like, when you move up, you're n- you're not necessarily dealing with the same uh, with new things. It's just the same thing in a different form. So whereas I was where the first time I got my first coaching client, I was like, oh my gosh, can I coach this person? Um, the inferiority was there. I was like, well, can I do this? And I had to rely on my skills and my training and do it. Now I'm at a different level where I'm not questioning whether I can coach people. You know, it's more of a, a, a larger platform. You know, can I do this? So there's there's always ways, and I see it this way. Um, there are always ways that God will say, if you think you've got it good and you don't need me, just wait. I'm going to show you how you do. Uh, and that's what I appreciate. That's what I appreciate. Because as you were saying before, I didn't merge the two. I was scared to merge the two. My practice, one of my spiritual gifts, which makes me such a great coach, is um, I have the gift of wisdom mm. and word of knowledge. So there will be things that come up in our coaching sessions that I'm like, now, technically, my coaching training says I should not say this, mm. but the spirit of God is telling me that I should. So I'm going to go with that. And those are some of the most the the the, the times that my clients have had the key, the, the most impactful breakthroughs yes. because God was there. So he was a part of my practice, but I never overtly said so. Right. And it was, well, you know, I don't want to be judged. I don't want people to think that I'm shoving my religion down their throats, blah, 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 all of that stuff. And I had to come to a point of realization that there are people who are looking for folks who can tell them how to develop um, practically in their careers and do so in a way that honors their faith, not dismisses it. And so um, when I when when I got to that realization, I mean, it was just it was just bigger than me. Um, that's when I said, you know what, we're going to merge these two. Um, and it's a part of who I am um, and um, who I'm called to serve because you want to do it. You know, you want God in every area of your life, not just here. You don't check your you don't check your relationship with God once you walk into your office. You know, no, I love he's that. everywhere. Um, likewise, you don't check your gifts and talents and your personality once you walk into the office as well. So it's how do I use what God has given me to um, make the impact that he's called me to make in my workplace. And so that's where um, that's where I am now. And that's 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 the journey. I still have those questions, but I'm like, well, it's not about me. So let's just keep going. I love that. I met somebody very briefly in my life. They had two purposes. They came in, they get out, and they were great purposes, which is why it was so so short. And he used to say that um, his board of trustees was God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And I loved that because when they are your board of trustees, you know that you can be booted if yeah. you don't listen to them, right? Yeah. <laughs> and that they are a sound advice, right? They know exactly what they're doing. They're more experienced than you. And then you need to um, give heed to what they said more so than when you're training or other people may say. Yes. So I just love what you're saying. It's, it's so amazing. And I know also that there are people that might not be faith-based, but they're open to it. And whatever you may say may open the door yes. for you to be able to minister to them. Because my yes. issue was I thought that I had to do ministry by itself or business by itself. But in reality, the, the business opens the door for me to do ministry. So I don't even have to choose one or the other. Exactly. Exactly. And that's why I say I use the word faith driven in my um, because there's this idea or spiritual driven like for spiritual people. Now, spiritual is a broad term. And so people who recognize that that there is another there's other things in this world besides just what we can see right now. Mm-hmm. And 
Uh, and God has brought people into my practice who have not, you know, on, we have, we have different spiritual and religious beliefs, but the idea is that, listen, God loves everybody yeah. and he has assignment for everybody. So yeah. for the short time that we are in the coaching engagement, there's something I'm supposed to say to this person that is an alignment. That's either watering what God has already put in their heart. That's either yes. seeing what God has already put in their heart. That's, um, you know, uh, that's just starting something. And it's not my job to know that, right? It's not my job to go, oh, this is what I have to do. I have to change you. That's not my job. My job is to be obedient to what God says. And my job is to give my clients the experience um, and the results that they're looking for as they are ascending in their careers and, you know, working with people on their jobs. So as long as I stay within my lane, I'm good. <laughs> I love that. Let everybody else, you know, figure out, you know, all the exactly, other stuff. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And we don't we don't have to clean the fish before it's it's, it's out of the water, right? Yes. So our job is to be love and be light. Yes. And if I'm gonna be if, if you're gonna learn about God or be exposed to God because we're hanging out together, we don't have to be the same in order to have a relationship, even if it's a business relationship, right? Right. We can be light with whoever. And I think that's the difference between some people that are so um, they mean well, right? But they don't yes. know that they need to meet with people that are not just like them yes. in order to be of service in uh, maximize the, the area of service. Does that make yes. sense? Yes. And to maximize the exposure, because I, I'm in a community of business owners and we are so different. It's not even funny. Like there is, you know, I mean, it's just complete, like our come from are completely different. How we serve the world is completely different, but we come together because we're entrepreneurs and we're trying to navigate this marketing space and get the clients that we're supposed to have and do the message that we're supposed to give. And I've learned so much about unconditional love. I have learned so much about patience. I've learned so much about my own self-righteousness. Let's just be honest. Yeah. Right? Yeah. As I interact with other people who think differently than I do. Now, my beliefs don't change. Mm -mm. They just evolve. And I just see, I just appreciate God more because um, I don't know if you've seen the movie The Shack. <laughs> I oh yes, I did. Or the read the book, but you know, the God figure in that, you know, the the the, the phrase that he kept saying was I'm particularly fond of that one, right? Mm, and this yeah. idea that God is particularly fond of everybody, you know? You know, he said when Christ came, when we didn't know him, he died. When we didn't know him, when we were yet still in our sins, Christ yeah. died and showed his love for us. So it wasn't, he didn't come to die for this cleaned up version of me. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he came to die for the version that when I'm upset that he didn't do what I wanted to do, I pout. He died for that version, you know, or, wow. you know, he died for the people that we don't like. He died for the people that we don't get along with. He died for them. So who am I if Christ is dying for all these people that I don't like or don't think the same way? Who am I to say they don't have value? And they do. And so part of my business model is to make sure that I'm brave enough to surround myself with people who are different than me, who um, think differently than me, who look differently than I do, who have different perspectives and just understand. Um, and because because it gives credence to, um, you know, the, the just the broad range of things that God has called us to do. So, yeah, I love that. And so and I love what you said. So if God was willing to part with his most precious possession, the person that he loved the most, mm -hmm. who am I and who are you to deny your gifts for people that are included in that bunch of people that he died for? Right. It just right. makes no right. sense. I love yeah. that. Right. So right in that vein, what have you learned about God that you didn't know before you were able to marry your calling and your vocation? Um, so there are things that I call head things and heart things. Mm. And there's only, what, six inches between here and where our heart is physically. Okay, it might be more than six inches. I can't do the math. But it's a short <laughs> distance between where our brain is physically located yeah. and where our heart's physically located. Yeah. And so, you know, as a believer, there are some things in my head that I know about God. Mm. I know God is love. I know that um, God is faithful. I know that... Um, that faith, you know, that, 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 um, this, this idea of faith is a free gift of grace that we just receive. We don't have to work for it. I know all of that right in here. I know God has a plan and purpose purposes right in here. Right. I know all of that. But the thing that I had to 
learned the most was how to get the things that I knew in my head into my heart. Yes. Because when things got tough, I realized that I was a doer, right? As an entrepreneur, you kind of have to be. Um, and I didn't see that. I was a doer. I was, okay, I need to do A, B, and C. I need to line this up. I need to make sure that, you know, this, that, and the other. I need to think strategically. I need to do all of these things. And over these past five years, this particularly was in the last four months, God has been showing me, you can't outwork my approval of you. You can't mm. work for my approval. Now, in my mind, I know that. In my mind, I know that, you know, grace is just that. It's unmerited favor. Just God just loves. And, and I don't have to do anything. There's nothing I can do to love God, um, for God to love me more. And there's nothing I can do for God to love me less. And yet, over the last course of these five years, it's just been a constant, you know, you're doing too much and you're not being with me. Mm. And that's what I had to learn. God wants to be with me more than he wants me to do for him. He wants me to be with me more than he wants me to do for him. And that's tough. You know, and a lot of the clients that I work with, people who are in um, at work and they're saying, well, God, you know, I feel like I'm called to work. I'm not necessarily called to start a ministry or be a part of full-time ministry. I'm supposed to be in my cubicle or in my office or in my co-working space, wherever people work out, or in my plant, in my factory. This is where I'm supposed to be. And the work culture that we have here in America is all about do, right? You have to do more, be more, go big, go home. And I had to learn that I, when I don't do, God doesn't love me any less. Mm. That was the biggest thing. When I don't do, God doesn't love me any less. Because there are times where it's like I'm at the end of my rope. <laughs> and I don't know how this is going to work. And these things that I planned for and confessed and believed and all this stuff, all of that stuff, well, it's just not happening the way that I thought it should be happening. So now what? And, you know, I had I had people in my life that came and was like, well, maybe you, um, I, I kind of felt like that Job experience where his friend was like, well, do you have some secret sins Ooh. that maybe if you're not, you know, confessing? And I was like, seriously? <laughs> and then I take that to God. I'm like, okay, what is it? Is there something in my heart? And here's what I recognize. Like, you know, the Bible says that if you ask God for, if, a, if you ask him for a fish, he won't give you a stone, right? So if I'm seeking... And he says, if you seek, you'll find. And if I'm asking, he says, if you ask, you'll receive. And I'm asking him, you know, what's going on here? And he's not revealing anything. Okay. And I need to let that go. Yep. Right? I can't take God's position and then go, you know, being a detective of my own heart going, well, leave it. Because that's all frustration, that strife, that striving. And um, honestly, it put me in depression. <laughs> Because I was trying to figure out, well, what secret thing am I not doing that is probably causing all of these things that don't I don't want to happen to happen? And I need to go investigate that and figure that out. God was just saying, can you just be? Wow. wow. And it's difficult still, but um, I'm at a much better place in my heart because I re realized I don't have to perform for God. I may have to perform for my clients. I may have to perform for, you know, um, the, the, the the corporate contract that I have. You know, those things I got to perform for. Now I have to perform for God. I can just let that be. And so, um, yeah, that was that. That is the biggest learning as of right now because it's still so fresh. Like you asked me in a couple of months, it might be a different learning. But that learning right now is really still fresh in my mind. That's huge. And I love, I just love how candid you are because this is why, this is what's going to help the most people. When we come and we pretend that we don't have frizzy hair days and we don't have days that we cry. I don't know if you cry, but I cry like a baby. Okay. Yes. And you pretend that every business day is awesome, that everybody gets it when you explain it or that you don't have people in your corner that ask you, like they ask you for sin. My, my favorite, it's like, are you sure you were supposed to be doing this? Yeah. Like, why did you step away from that, like, big paying job? Like, are you sure that you misheard God? Are you sure it's not time to go back to work? Maybe it was a season that this was for. Are you Jesus. sure it's not time to go back just, just to get a job? Maybe God is, yeah. I've heard that too. 
And then, but then I have to go back. I have to go back to my why. And so one of the things yeah. that I know about myself is that my purpose in this life is to help help people have a better relationship with God, themselves, and others in that mm-hmm. order. So everything that I do stems from one of these three things. So helping people have a better relationship with God, self, and others. Well, guess what? If I'm going to be helping people have a better relationship with God, self, and others, guess who's going to be the first test guinea pig? It's going to be me. So I have to check my relationship with God. I have to check my relationship with others, um, with myself. And I have to check my relationship with others. And understanding and helping me understand, um, knowing that who God is and then who I am in relation to him, my identity is in him and not all these other things. So my identity is not in my Facebook followers and the number of people I have on this. You know, it's not in all these things that say um, who I am, right? My identity is in God. And then it's my purpose about others. So relationship is huge to me. So when God told me one day, um, when I was making some transitions in the business, and he said, there are people, you are Joshua. See, mm. Moses, we know Moses. And Moses was the deliverer, right? And he delivered the people out of the bondage. And there are people who's assigned to do that because in the body, we all have our assignments. He goes, but you are Joshua. What Joshua's job was to get the people from uh, to the promised land. So they have been set free already, but there were some promises that God had for them they, they had not attained. And so if you look at the book of Joshua, it's all about how people are going to attain their land. And guess what? They're fighting a lot <laughs> because they're going to attain, right? So I liken that to, you know, um, the, the people that I work with, whether they're in middle management, whether they're new managers, whether they're seasoned managers, whether they're uh, senior level folks at in, in, in their workplace, there is some stuff like you've gotten to the place that you've gotten in your career. And because there were some things that had to be delivered. So you had your Moses experience. But now there's some promises. Mm-hmm. There's some things that are bigger than you that you need to go after. And what my coaching programs in does and you know when I speak to people, what I do is I, I point people towards what's that next? for you what's that promised land for you could it be that promotion that you're resisting you know going to get because you're saying oh no i can't grab that promotion that's not humble and it's like well god is wanting you to go there so you're going to tell god no now i tell god no all the time you know it's like no i'm going to do that and then (laughs) because that's just the nature of how we are we're reluctant first Right. And then we become obedient. And so but if we can just shorten that period between our reluctance and obedience, mm. then that's growth. I see it as. So, um, you know, that's one of the things where when people are moving towards their next, you know, I tell people, great, you've been delivered for some stuff, but you can't just stay in the land of mm-hmm. good enough. There is great because it's not just you, but it's about other people. So when God showed me that there were other people attached to my obedience, then I took it more seriously. You know, like, had you not said, I'm going to go out and I'm going to interview people about what God's doing in their lives, we wouldn't have connected. And someone who may see this will get a breakthrough. But if you said no, and I said no, then that person who sees this, who listens to this, will still be in bondage. You know what I mean? So um, once I realized, hey, it was, it's it's a little bit larger than me, um, it gives me that gumption to keep going. I love that. I love that because I think for when we say no to God, it's because we are still in our current state. We see see ourselves in our current state. God's like, I moved on from that a while ago. Yeah. I, I don't see you like that. I told you that I was a watering hole. I was like a rest stop and you want to build your home there. Listen, yes. honey, your mansion is down the street. So yes. you've, got, you've got to keep going. Yes. Yes. I heard someone, I don't know if it was Miles Monroe. Um, I can't remember who it was, but someone said, ones that, you know, as, uh, it, as as Christians, we always talk about Jesus is the door. He goes, Jesus is the door. He is the entryway. And so well, what we do is like, we just talk about how fancy this door is. Like mm. all you need to do, look at the windows, look at the framing, look at the knobs and the, all these things. And we just, we just take people to the door and say, that's all you need to do is just get to the door. Mm. Well, the door is a gateway to a whole other side. And there's more, once you open the door and enter in, there is a whole house. There is a whole possibility of, you know, a cleaning business that's there. And so our focus needs to be not just, yes, people got to come through the door, but beyond the door, what's next? And that's kind of where I feel, you know, God has called me. Um, 
because there used to be just this idea that ministry could only happen. And we know that's changing now. Ministry can only happen in church, right? So if you had the gift of apostleship, then you're supposed to be starting churches. Well, maybe that gift of apostleship is about the pioneering spirit where you're supposed to be starting things. So your apostleship gift could look something like starting businesses or starting groups or starting, you know, something else where you're the foundational something to start something else. Right. Mm. That's been true in my life. You know, I never went, I was like, God, what is this apostleship? I don't know that because the idea was, yeah, to start a church. I'm like, I am not interested, but can I tell you how many, how I, how many things I've been the foundational member of? Mm. You know, how I've started a business, how I've started several businesses. Um, Lots of them failed. This is the only one that, (laughs) this is the only one that's actually stuck. Um, But it's this idea that, okay, it's not just the door. There's this whole other package outside beyond the door that we need to go to. And that's what Joshua, you know, that's the, the imagery of Joshua was, what's beyond the door? Yeah. What else? There's some promises here. Now, yes, there's going to be some fighting. And so that's part of my coaching is like, I walk people through that. How do I mentally navigate this? Okay, once you accept the call and then you start having issues, then it's like, uh, excuse me, hold up, please. Mm -hmm. You called me to do this. Like, we all had that. You called me to do this. Why is this happening? Right? So helping people walk through that, that's a part of the process. Um, And um, so, yeah, so that's that's one of the things I, I just look past that. Yes, Jesus is wonderful and great. Maybe he's access to the door. And then there's so much so great stuff after that, right? So let's go after that. I love that. I love so much of that because I think many of the things that we fight is because when we see something that looks like a car, we think that it's going to be like every other car that we have seen before. And God's like, you don't understand. There's no precedent to what I have called you to do. So yes, it's a car, but I'm going to teach you how to drive this particular car with the skills that I have given you and that you are yet to learn. Yes. It's amazing. Yes. It's yes. Amazing. Wow. Yes. So knowing what you know now, what would you have done differently? Um, so instinctively, my first thought was I wouldn't do anything differently mm-hmm. because I learned so much. But then I thought about it some more. And honestly, it boils down to trust. Mm-hmm. And um, I look at it as an acronym. So going through knowing what I know now, I would say T, I have to make sure that truth trumps fear, Mm. right? So that the truth, not my truth, but the capital T truth of what the word says trumps my opinions, my fears, my insecurities, my lack, right? So that I don't have more faith in my lack than I do the truth of God, right? So T, I would trust um, I, I, I would make sure that, you know, that truth trumps fear are is I would rest mm. often because we get into this do mode, right? In our world, busy is a badge of honor. How you doing? Oh, girl, I'm so busy. You know, and then we start comparing each other. Well, she's busy. But busy doesn't mean productive. Mm. Busy doesn't mean happy. Busy doesn't mean profitable. Busy doesn't mean, you know, successful. Busy just means you just got a lot of stuff going on. Yeah. And um, so I would rest often, you know, Jesus did it like he was, he had a great mission, but then he would go away and rejuvenate himself. And I love it. I use this, I use this uh, line all the time. If you've ever flown on an airport, um, in an airplane, they say, in the event that we experience cabin pressure loss, please, oxygen mask will drop down from the ceiling. Please secure your mask before attempting to secure the masks of others. And I believe as believers sometimes in this idea that we have to be servants, we have this in our mind that we have to put other people's masks on before we do ours. And I found that that's not true. And I was, when I lived a life that way, I was tired Mm. and you can't do what God wants you to do. Tired, burned out, you know, broke down and crying. So I would rest. Um, So that's the R. The U is I would make sure I understand myself. So when I said God, self and others, you know, there's this idea that, you know, well, you can't focus on yourself because that's being selfish. 
mm. and that's being prideful. We can't do that. You know, we're supposed to esteem others better than we are ourselves, right? And we take that out of context, and then we have a group of martyrs running around who just for the sake of for the sake of, right? Um, they don't know who they are. And I find that a lot of times, you know, clients that I work with, they're in the jobs that they are because someone said, hey, you should do this. Yeah. And I go, okay. And they don't take the time to understand how did God make me? What's my personality? What's the gifts that I have? What are the things that I naturally do that people come to me and go, can you help me with that? And I'm like, really? You need help with that? Okay, here's what you do. One, two, three, four. Got it? Go. You know, and they're like, wow, how did you do that? Right? Yeah. Um, so understanding my makeup and the most powerful, one of the most powerful prayers I've ever prayed, Catherine, was God, help me see clearly. Mm. Help me see myself clearly, not through inflated eyes, yeah. not through, you know, demoralized eyes, not through the eyes of the abuse that I've experienced in the past or the, the abandoned ministries, not through those eyes, but let me see myself clearly. And when he started to do that, I was like, oh, snap. And I can say without bragging, I'm pretty dope. I'm pretty dope because, you know, he created me. And he's like, you know, um, oh, what's that scripture now? It's just escaping my mind. But we talk about, you know, um, this is the Lord's doing. Mm. And it's marvelous in my eyes. And I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Yeah. So I know that right well. Yep. Right? I know that right well. I know that. Um, and it's not bragging. It's I know who I am. I know my purpose and I know my assignment. So that would be you. I would understand myself. So truth, trump and fear, um, rest often, understand myself as having a support system that gets me. Listen, that is so huge. Mm. Having a support system that gets you and gets where you're going. Because sometimes people have to bow out of your lives when you're going after your dreams because you remind them that they don't have any Preach, yes. And that's hard because my brand is, you know, my brand is one that says, hey, everybody can do this. Like everyone has some leadership potential. Come on, we can do this together. And when people say no, then I I used to stop and go, well, maybe I shouldn't pursue this because they're not coming. Why aren't they coming? This is so fantastic. What, what's happening, right? Um, and so I would stifle my mm. dream mm. because other people weren't coming along with me and I would go you know I saw it back when I was young when I was a kid I used to get good grades and then my grandmother would talk about my grades to my other family members that, that were the same age I was and I would hate it because they didn't get as good grades and I was like no don't make them feel bad and that was my come from mm-hmm. when I got a support system that said hey we're going with you are you coming yes don't bat your eye. So if you're, you're, you know, you're going to start another six figure business. Fantastic. Go for it. You're going to go for your first seven figures. Girl. Yes. You know, when you have people in your life, you're going to go after God in a way that may seem weird and crazy to other people do it. Right. When you have people in your life that have a support system that, that supports where you are and where you're going, you feel like you can do anything. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, and that's kind of how the disciples were with Jesus. Like they had to, they spent that time, all 12 of them, they spent that time to get to know each other because they had to have each other once he was gone. And, you know, they had the assignments that they needed to do. So that was S. And then last one, thankfulness. Right. I would be more thankful. I would be more thankful for the trials. I would be more thankful for the good times. Like what in all things, give thanks, right? Yeah. That the praise of God will forever be in my mouth. Just be giving thanks. So if I had to do it differently, um, you know, I would make sure that truth trumps my fear, that I would rest more often, that I would take the time to understand myself, um, lean into the support system that I need to go for where I go, and just be thankful for everything that God yeah. has done. I love that. I love all of that. And my favorite probably is um, having the support system because I remember about two months ago, I knew God was moving me to a new season, to a new place. And that place was higher than where I already was. And I was having a hard time getting there and taking too long because I was bringing all these people with me because I'm all like, I'm a cheerleader. Like we all can do it. And my fast 
is other people's like, you know, five years thing, right? And for me, it's like, let's do that in a day, right? Yes, yes. And then this person, just, right? This person will call me like one you. day. <laughs> I know we're connecting in so many levels. Um, this person called me out of the blue, right? One morning and he thought I called him for something and he's like, I'm like, no, I, I was not calling you for that. We ended up talking about something else. And he said, Catherine, the Lord says that you have to stop stopping what you're doing to hold the door for other people that are way behind. And that hurt my heart because I'm yes. like, you don't understand. Yes. They can, I see it. They can do it. And they he said, they can do you it. have the possibility. Yep. And then he, you know what he said? He said, Catherine, they can do it. But how are you going to be able to help them if you're not, if you don't arrive first? Yeah. And that really helped me. You need to arrive first. You will be able to reach back and they, they'll be able to watch you and learn. But your assignment in this season is to arrive first. Yes. And that after I mourn, because I had to mourn it. I yes. had to, I had to yes. be like, wow, I'm going to have to leave them behind. And then I realized I'm going to be able to help them more by arriving and doing what God has called me to do. So I love your, your, th- those five things are amazing. And one of the things, you know, I realized too, I had to make some of those very same shifts. And then another shift that I had to make was there is a time, there was a time in my life where I had people, where I was one of the people that I had to leave behind. Mm. You know what I mean? I was one of those people where someone was saying, Julie, you can do this. You can do this. Come on, come on. And I was like, no, I'm not, I'm not ready. And so they had to go. And in God's divine timing in seasons, right? Everyone has times and seasons. Right. So it wasn't that they weren't running as fast as I am. They were running their own race mm. and I had to run mine. And so I had to let go of this idea that I was leaving someone behind and shift that thinking to they're running their race. And when it's time, like the season that we were together was for a reason. And when it's time, if it's time for us to converge again at a different point in the future, then we will. But they're not bad people. They're not slow. They're not lazy. And I think that's one of the things that we do. We get into this idea of, well, everybody can't be where I am. It's like, well, you weren't where, you know, there was at one point you were one of these people, (laughs) you know, right? You were one of these people who was running from the call. Someone else accepted the call, was running, was like, come on. And you were like. No, thank you. I'm going to Nineveh. And just, you know, and so I just had to release and just have grace that, you know, God has their journey mapped out. Just like he has mine. He's those, you know, he orders our steps. He knows the number of our days. And so I have to follow my step and I have to free people to follow theirs and let God do the work and the development Mm -hmm. in them. And when it's time, if we converge again, then we will. If not, then, you know, praise God, because what needed to happen, happened then. You know, we just keep moving on. So, yeah. right, we'll keep it moving and we'll see them in heaven. That's yeah. all good. That's all <laughs> yeah. good. I love that. Oh my God, I love it this so much. So, let me ask you this. Um, you know, we're not 20 anymore. Thank God. <laughs> yeah. So, what would you tell your younger self? Like, what would you, what would you tell that girl um, that you think will, will help her if you could? Yeah. Um, this is going to sound very self-serving, but it's so, so true. I would tell her to be brave enough to take more risks. Mm. Just take more risks because in your now, you know, hindsight is twenty twenty. So when you look back, he was like, why didn't I do that? I had, I didn't have a husband. I didn't have kids. I didn't have a mortgage and all these things that I needed to, you know, I, 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 all I had was time and energy. So why didn't I take that opportunity? So, um, explore your bravery is what I would say. You know, what are the ways that you can afford to be a little more brave? Even if it's, you know, you typically I'm sitting at a desk and people make rude or inappropriate comments and I don't say anything, but this day, you know, that's not an appropriate comment to make in the workplace. And that's all I say, right? It it can be that small or it could be something, you know, greater, maybe running for an office um, or, you know, something of that nature, but take more risks because the more risk you take, failing is good. Uh, uh, they don't teach you that in school. Like in school, it's failing is bad, right? And failure is something to be avoided at all times. But it's like, no, like in real life, even in the life, like failing is good because there's so much, there's so much more uh, the lessons are so much deeper and meaningful after you failed 
right? So when the disciples couldn't cast the demon out of that one guy and it came to Jesus, it was like, why could we do that? There was a teaching in that, yeah. you know, if you succeed at everything and you never take any risks, then, you know, you're, 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 it's, it's, it's more shallow. You know, God says that, you know, those who've been forgiven much love much. Why? Because you know what you done did. Yeah. And God was like, I'm good, you know? So, um, so yeah, just take more risks and fail, fail fast and just be okay with failing that this is not the end. Just like Jesus says, you know, count it all joy. Or, you know, when you come into temptations and trials and stuff like that, it's like, yeah, because it proves it proves your faith. It proves your, it, it, it builds your endurance. It builds your personality. It builds your relationship with God, right? Because you got to go to him and like, what's up? Yeah. My husband and I, we have the saying that we, when, when we have the saying um, now, when God's doing something and we go this way and something like that and we don't understand and we go, Holy Spirit, what the heck? <laughs> <laughs> What happened? What the heck? What is going on, right? Because that thing, where does it drive us? It drives us straight to God. Yeah. You know, and that's where, and that's what he wants. He wants us everything, every place we could possibly think of. He was, come to me, all ye who are burdened and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me because yeah. my yoke is easy. I know how to do this in a way that's not going to blow your mind. Mm. I can tell you if you just come to me. Yeah. I want to tell you. Right. Or I have told you and you just not listening. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. That happens too. So, so um, yeah, that's what I was just saying. Just, you know, be brave, take more risks. Um, and that's in fact, that's why I named my company brave because it was a, it's a constant reminder to me that this entrepreneurial thing, is just not me. Like, this is, I got, wasn't mm-hmm. thinking about doing it. Right, didn't exactly. Think, I wasn't. I didn't think I had an entrepreneurial bone in my body. Um, and to look at me as a kid, you wouldn't either. Because I thought entrepreneurs were people who had their, they had the lemonade stands, they had the paper routes, they made their first million by the time they were 10. Oh, and right. Stuff. I'm like, yeah, that's not me. No, no, I love that. It's one of the things that I love saying lately is, if everything is perfect in your life all the time, you're not doing enough. Yeah. Uh, so true. So yeah. True. And especially like you're saying, if you're succeeding all the time, it's like those kids that are uh, really gifted and they're acing the classes left and right and they're barely doing any work, they're under challenge. Right. So if everything is easy peasy for you, you are in the wrong group. One of the things yes. that I love saying too is, I don't want to be the smartest person in the room ever. Yes. Yes. No. Yes. Not doing that. Nope. No, do that. Oh my God. And I can talk. You are, you can't have, you have to get out of the room. You got to go to a different room because there are times where you're, you're supposed, you are supposed to be the smartest person because you got to get some knowledge. You got to share some stuff. With yeah. You. Then share what you got to share and then get to a place where you dumb again. Yeah. <laughs> and so get out. Can, yeah. Yeah. Get yeah. Out. So you can, you know, you can learn some more. Yeah, absolutely. Oh my God. I have loved our time together. I could talk to you forever. Oh my God. You're amazing. And I know that we'll collaborate with other amazing things because I just love how God just put us together in this amazing, amazing season. Uh, So what's, what's next for you? What's happening with Brave? Well, um, one of the things that I'm doing is um, I'm doing a prayer challenge that's going to be starting here in in the next couple um, weeks in June. And it's a prayer challenge for people at work. You know, there's there are prayer challenges for marriage and, cl- and, and you know, kids and, you know, all that other thing. But this is, I'm going to say, hey, let's take five days to pray mm. for God's direction for your work and your career. And so uh, people can find more about that at um, prayer challenge. Um, I'm sorry, at powerprayerchallenge.us, powerprayerschallenge.us. And um, it's this idea of we're going to take five days and we're going to listen to what God has to say. And this is not me. Let me say this. It's not me praying for people because that can be its own thing. Like God wants to hear from you. Yeah. I don't, my prayers don't get answered. I'm not more special than you are in your, you know, so this is how do you pray for your career Mm -hmm. and how do you get some practical guidance about if I have a career issue, where do I go in a way that I can get the practical benchmark proven knowledge of leadership and, you know, development and 
that prayer support, that faith support, where at the times where knowing the seasons that I'm in, God will say, okay, do this or don't do that. And you have to be discerning enough to know that. So um, if you go to powerprayerschallenge.us, um, you know, people who listen, they, they can um, join us. You know, the first time we ran it, we had over 600 people say, hey, for five days, I'm going to pray. And then I'm teaching people, you know, the secrets to that I, I, I use to help my clients move from senior management to CEO candidate and from, um, you know, first from individual contributor to first time manager, you know, like these are the secrets that I've used to help my clients do that. So I'm going to show you some of this too. So that's going to be a part of that. So um, that's what's, that's what's currently happening. And just creating that community of people who are faith driven and they love their work and it's okay. And they stand proud in it. They're not ashamed of it anymore. Um, and, um, they're just saying, this is where God has called me. So this is what I want to do. So that's what's happening next. That is amazing. I so love that. So, um, power prayer challenge that us. Awesome. Definitely got to go there. Um, thank you so much for your time. And will you want to leave us with final word of wisdom for those that are in that transition of they heard from God, they want to, they know they need to marry, they're calling on their vocation and they are praying about it and they're on the verge of doing it. How will you encourage them to take that leap? Um, I would encourage people, listen, if God has called you to do it, so a couple of things need to happen. Number one, you just need to accept the call. Stop running. Okay. Because that's going to just delay it. So accept that God has called you to it. Then search for people who are supporting you. Mm. So, and sometimes here's the thing that uh, sometimes it may not be people that you know. You have to go other, like one of the, my aunt clients, I don't know, Catherine. We just met, but I feel like we have known each other forever because we have a, a similar mentality. So you got to find the people that have the mindset that you want so they can encourage you because your doubt will do its own work. You don't need anybody else in your life telling you you can't do it because you're going to doubt yourself, right? So you need people who will expose that and go, um, excuse me, that's a lie. Mm. That's a lie. That's not true. Um, so what are we going to do about now? You need people in your life who will speak the truth to you to the point where you get mad and then you get thankful. Yeah. A pastor, a pastor used to say, you know, the truth will make you free. It will set you free, but it'll make you mad first. Mm. Yeah. So you need the people in your lives who will tell you the truth, make you mad, and then you can go, okay, yeah, I really need to do that. Um, and then do it. Like, there's no, the antidote to despair is action. Mm. Do it. Take a small step. You know, Peter had to step out into the step out of the boat onto the water. You have to take a step. When Jesus healed the lepers, um, uh, yeah, he healed the lepers. He said, go show yourself to the priest. And the scripture says, as they went, they were healed. So you have to do it. So accept the call, find your support system that has the same mindset that you do, and then take an action, take a small action, make it a Facebook post, do something like write it down. doesn't have to be huge. You don't have to shout it from the mountaintops, but you have to do something to move forward because that displays your faith. Yeah, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. I love that. I know that this episode is going to be so helpful to so many people that are looking for this. I'm looking for this because I, when I heard this, God, God, Catherine put this together. I'm like, yes, this, this is yes. exactly where I need to be. And finding people like you, I got connected for somebody that we have in common. Uh, when I posted it, they're like, yeah, you need to talk to Julia. She will be amazing. And they were so right yeah uh, this is so on time um if and i have to call her and thank her you know for this it. connection because um yeah I, we'll be talking more even after this i'm sure <laughs> we will we will uh guys thank you so much for listening or those of you that are watching thank you for watching i'm telling you somebody share this with you you found this on youtube you found this on, uh, on itunes wherever you found this it is not a coincidence i yeah. don't believe in that somebody sent this to you for a reason because it's mighty time it's high time yeah. Yeah. that you step out of the boat and then you um 
spread your wings and bring out your sassy self and let the world know, listen, I'm yeah. here and I'm not going anywhere. Julia, and you're you, amazing. And I'm just going to tell your, you know, your listeners, hey, I am open. Like, if you want to call me, my number is 662-426-1260. Like, I'm one of those people. Hey, if you're like, I don't know what to do next, we can talk about it. I love it. I love that accessibility and how how open you are. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you, Julia. You're Thanks. amazing. Thank you. So I cannot much. wait to see what you're gonna do with your uh, with your marriage. I'm telling you, get married, marry your comfort, your your calling and your vocation, and you're gonna see doors that were not even there before. They're gonna open like this. Nobody's business. Oh, amazing. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you on the next episode. <laughs>